may be seated. Last week we talked about Easter and how important Easter is, but you have to understand Easter is um, it's a forerunner of something else. You understand it, right? Easter's not the end. Easter is telling us that there will be a second coming of Jesus Christ. That's what Easter is about. And so uh, this morning I want to talk to you about the second coming of the Lord, and I want to share with you some scriptures. So, um, so, so when we get in the word, Lord, I'm asking you to try to stay there with me. You know, sometimes your mind can wander or something like that. But I believe there's so many things in the word of God that are so powerful as it relates to the return of Christ uh, that, that if we could get a simple little understanding on the return of Christ today, it, 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 would, it would make a lot of difference in what we do tomorrow. That makes sense? If we get a simple little understanding on the concept of the return of Christ, it'll make a difference in what we do tomorrow. Before we begin, let, let me try and get you to laugh. Let me try. Uh, lighthearted story. You, you know, I read the other day, children laugh 150 times a day. An adult will laugh three times a day. What that means is we have a lot of problems because we don't know how to laugh through some things. We need to learn how to laugh. It will change our whole life. It will change our health, really. If we can learn how to laugh at ourselves, especially, man, that would be great. Anyway, this woman dies. She dies. She goes up to the pearly gate in St. Peter. And when she goes up there, Peter said, we've got a new regulation going on. said, uh, you got to be able to spell a word before you get into heaven. She said, what word? He said, oh, it don't matter. Any word you want to spell, it's just, all right, any word to do. You can spell any word you want to. So she said, okay, said, uh, I spell love, L-O-V-E. So that's really good, right? And St. Peter said, I've been here a long time. I need to take a small break. You see how simple this is? Anybody can do it. You can do it. Just go ahead and do this. You'll do this job just fine. I'll be back in a little while. Everything will be okay. She said, okay, I'll do it for you. So in a little while, coming down the hallway is her ex-husband. She said, what happened to you? He said, I had a massive heart attack and died. And he, she, and he said, so what I got to do to get into heaven? She said, well, you got this far. There's only one more thing you got to do. He said, well, what is that? He said, you got to spell a word. She, he said, what word? She said, Czechoslovakia. <laughs> Don't guess she got all the major wings just yet, huh? Luke chapter 21, verse number 24 said, they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall lead them away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden underfoot of the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Can I tell you what's going on right now? The end of the Gentile age is coming upon us. Jerusalem has been trodden underfoot by the Gentiles, but that is changing. Uh, we, are, we are aware that even now they want to build, the Jews want to build a temple right next to the dome of the mosque. And, and the Gentile age is coming to an end. Luke chapter uh, 21, verse number 29 said, And he spake to them a parable, said, Behold the fig tree and all the trees. When they shoot forth, you shall see, and know of your own self that summer is nigh at hand. So likewise, when you see these things come to pass, know, know ye that the kingdom of God is at nigh at hand. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Can I tell you something? We, we are seeing Bible prophecy fulfilled everywhere. You know, for a long time, we talked about the mark of the beast and how that uh, the Bible said that, that when the mark of the beast comes, you receive a mark in your forehead or your right hand. And, and what we realized is, and even in some countries now, you can't get in that country until you're a hand dynamic. No two hands in the world are alike. Did you know that? No two hands are alike. And you know what else is, is amazing? is So it's in your hand, right? The second thing is no two retinas in the eye are alike. So it's not so much the mark of the beast. It's a matter of identifying you and who you are. And so we used to talk about that a lot, but we don't talk about that as much anymore because we see more signs being fulfilled. Christians are being killed. Christians are being killed. And can I tell you what's unique about it is? And it doesn't make the news. It doesn't make the news anymore. I mean, they're being killed, and, and, and the Muslims are killing people. And, and uh, like Palm Sunday, those people were killed on Palm Sunday. It didn't show up nowhere on Monday. So what, what does that mean? 
that means that we are seeing signs being fulfilled in the world in which we live. And you know, when I was preparing for this message, uh, I felt like the Lord said, I want you to give a, a, a disclaimer. And I, I said, Lord, that, that, I don't know if I can do that disclaimer. And, and this is what the Lord said. Tell them that there's a universal code for Christianity. I said, Lord, I don't know if anybody understands that or not. They, he said, then tell them this. you got to seek out your own salvation with fear and trembling. In other words, you've got to have a relationship with God that is real and that is really working for you. And, and let me tell you, and, and I don't know, you, you got to understand that we know that the Word of God is right. Amen? So we're sure not saying that the Word of God isn't right. We're just saying that, that you can't say, well, my mom and dad did it this way. I'll do it that way. You can't say, well, Sister Sue did this way. I'm going to do it that way. No, 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 it's not like that. Everybody has to say, wait a minute, I'm going to have a relationship with God that is real, and it's in the Word of God, and I'm going to live in a way that pleases God according to His Word. Amen. We can ill afford to say because mama or daddy or grandma or grandpa did that the right way. I'm going to, no, 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 no. you got to have a relationship with God that is full of passion, endless passion. you got to have a relationship with God that is hot and on fire. You cannot have a relationship with God that is stale. Let me try that again. You cannot have a stale relationship with God and get anywhere. As a matter of fact, if you have a stale relationship with God, when the trumpet of God sounds, you will never hear it. And I can tell you this, God does not do well in second place. As a matter of fact, he doesn't do second place. If God's not God of all, he's not God at all. Does that make sense to anybody? And we live in a society today where that somehow that God has become religion. Can I tell you this? God is not religion. God is a relation. The, the, if, if your relationship or your religion with God is about the do's and the don'ts, we've missed it. Your relationship has got to be about pleasing God some way, somehow. In other words, you love God more than you love anything in all the world. And when you love God like that, then you open up life for God to do things in your life. Amen? We, we, we were talking about the end of the Gentile age. And, 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 uh, in, in 1948, May 15, 1948, um, Israel became a nation again. You got that? They were six hours old and they were attacked by all the Arab world. Air, all the Arab world. You know that, right? And, and the, the, this war, and I know six day war, but this war lasted nine months, three weeks, and two days. And at the end of the war, Israel had gained 60% of all the Arab territory, plus what they already had. You see what I'm saying? I'm saying that when we look at the budding of the trees, when you look at these things happening, we begin to realize that God is saying, I'm coming. I'm coming. No, 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 no. You, you don't get this. I'm coming soon for a church looking for my return. Amen? Anybody here ever been involved in a wedding? Anybody ever planned a wedding? Anybody ever had a daughter that got married and you planned the wedding? Anybody ever been involved in a wedding? Can, can tell you what the Bible talks about? We're talking about the marriage of the Lamb. We're talking about a wedding taking place. The, the church is the bride and God is the groom. You know that, right? If you know anything about those weddings, they are consuming. You understand that? They consume you. For X number of days, it's all about everything, about making sure everything goes just right. I'm telling you that God is saying for his church, we need to be ready. We need to be the bride of Christ. We need to make sure that we're ready to meet God in a moment and second and twinkling of an eye. And that's what God's saying in the word of the Lord. Let's start said in Romans 11, 25 said, I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery. At least you should be wise in your own conceit that the blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles become in. In other words, God's saying, Wake up, church. Wake up, Gentiles. Things are happening right now in Israel, and, and, and they're happening in such a way that we might be ready to meet God whenever he comes. And we have to know that beyond any shadow of doubt. So I want to talk to you about three things today. The end of the Gentile age, number one, the sun and the moon and the stars. And we'll talk about that. Number three, I want to talk about overcharged with surfeiting. Those three things won't take long at all. And so when we begin to realize God's talking about the end of the Gentile age, if you go to Revelation chapter 11, verse number one, it said, and by the way, today I'm going to use quite a few scriptures. And I'll move through them as fast as I can, but it's the Word of God I want to talk to you about. You understand that, right? I want to talk to you about the Word of God. Uh, uh, and, and I want you to get a handle on the Word of God to where that you know what God's trying to say. Revelation chapter 11, verse 1. And there was given a reed like unto a rod, and the angel stood saying, Rise and measure the temple of God and the altar 
and them that worship therein. But the court which is without the temple leave out, and measure it not. For it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city shall they tread, shall they tread underfoot forty and two months. Can I tell you something? Two things I want to talk about in a minute. Number one is there's going to be a rapture of the church. Revelation chapter 4, verse 1, we'll talk about that in a minute. But there's going to be a return of Christ, which is Revelation chapter 19. We're going to talk about that for a moment too. But, but, but what, what's going on is he's talking about here that, that there's going to be a tribulation period and there's going to be a time when the Antichrist sets up his kingdom. And for the first 42 months, the first three and a half years of that time, there's going to be world peace. There's going to be peace. But then the Antichrist is going to show that he really is the Antichrist, and there's going to be the abomination of desolation spoken of in the book of Daniel. But in Daniel chapter 9, verse number 27, look, and he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, and in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice of abolition to cease, and for the overspreading of the abomination he shall make it desolate, even under the consummation, and that the determined shall be poured upon the desolate. In other words, at the end of those three and a half years, Everything changes, and there's going to be a war like there's never been before. You say, well, why is that significant to me? I said a moment ago, we're going to talk about the rapture of the church versus the return of Christ. I want you to go with me to Revelation chapter 4, verse 1. Listen to this, and I'm going to skip some of my scriptures too because I've got too many, okay? Revelation chapter 4, verse 1. And I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the voice, and the first voice which I heard was as it were a trumpet uh, taking, talking with me, saying, Come up hither, and I will show these, these things which must be hereafter. Hereafter what? Hereafter what? And, and listen, listen. And then he said in the beginning of Revelation chapter 4, he said, And I looked, and behold, a door was open in heaven, and a voice, the first voice was like a sound of a trumpet. He said, hereafter what? He's talking about after the church age. Revelation 1, chapter 1, 2, and 3 talks about the church ages and, and each different age. But now he's talking about something that's going to be really kind of phenomenal, going to really, really mess people up. It's going to be called the catching away of the bride. In other words, there's going to be a time when the end of the Gentile age and when these things are being fulfilled in a very midst, there's going to be a thing that's called the rapture or in the Word of God it's called the catching away. When this happens... What's, remember what I said that no universal code? In other words, you can't serve God like your mama served God or your daddy served God, but you better be serving God. Because what's going to happen, we talked about it in Sunday school day, you, you're going to go to mom and dad's room and they're going to be gone. You, somebody's going to be driving down the road in a tractor trailer and he's going to be gone and the truck's going to keep moving. You say, oh, I don't know if I believe it. It don't matter if you believe it, it's the word of God. Amen. It is the Word of God. And can I tell you something? We have gotten so far for, away from the Word of God, and we've got our own philosophies about things. Your philosophy won't work. You've got to know that there's coming a return of Christ, only there's going to be a catching way first. And the catching way is for the bride. Who is the bride? It's those that are getting ready, ready for the wedding. Amen. Are you listening to me? It's those that are getting ready for the wedding. That's the bride. Remember what I said earlier, and you know I'm telling the truth. When people get ready for a wedding, everybody's on edge. Everybody's got everything lined up. But the big deal is the bride's ready. You understand? She comes walking down the aisle in a $10,000 dress, 50 people there, but she's ready. And not only is she ready, she's anxious. She's anticipating. She's waiting for that moment in her life. The church is the bride. And the bride is caught away. First Thessalonians 4 and 16 said, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and the voice of the archangel and the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be called up together with him in the air to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore comfort one another with these words. It's the word of God, folks. Now it may be a foreign doctrine to somebody here, but it's the word of God. God is saying, I'm coming back for my church. I'm, I'm going to do something in a minute. I'm going to show you about the second coming of Christ. I'll show you that in just a minute. I'm going to show you that in a moment. But I'm telling you, if there's any dates you don't want to miss, you don't want to miss the rapture of the church. And we're going to talk about that in a moment, too. Um, uh, Revelation 19, 11 said, And I saw heaven open, behold, a white horse, and he set up on on, upon him was called faithful and true, and in righteous and, and in righteousness doth he judge and make war. His eyes were as flames of fire, on his head were many crowns, and he had written that no man knew but he himself. Uh, and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, 
and he is called, and, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies were, and the armies were in heaven, uh, followed him with white horses, clothed fine linen, uh, fine linen, white and clean. Do, do, you, do you have this so far? It, it, it's not complicated. N number one, there is a rapture of the church takes place in Revelation chapter four, verse number one. Revelation 19 is the second coming of Christ. Anybody got that? Don't get them confused. Don't get them confused. That'd be a mistake. It'd be a terrible mistake. You have two events in the Word of God, and these events are very powerful. You say, what's this about? It's about Easter. reason Christ came was to come again. And He's coming for a church, not just the Jewish world, but He's coming for the Gentiles. That's us. And He's coming for those that are ready for the wedding. He's coming for those that are ready for the wedding. You say, why are you preaching this day? I'm telling you the wedding's close. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, everybody knows that, that you can have Mark of the Beast like that. Everybody knows that. It's not a big deal. Matter of fact, horses and dogs, they all got chips in them. What's the big deal about a human having a chip? And listen to me. It's not the chip. It's not a big deal. You understand? If I lived in New York City and they could put a chip in my child so I'd know where that child was at, I'd put a chip in there. So, oh, you're crazy. You're a lunatic. No, I'm not. It's not the chip. What's going to happen is people will pledge an allegiance to the mark of the beast to get the mark. So, Pastor, what we're saying, I want to talk to you a minute. I want to talk to you just a minute. What's going to happen on earth between the rapture and the return? I'll talk to you on what's going to happen on earth. Revelation chapter 8. As a matter of fact, in Revelation chapter 6 through 8, it talks about the seven seals which are open. Revelation chapter 8 through 11 talks about the seven angels which sounded the seven trumpets. And, and, and then more angels with seven more vials. Look, uh, Revelation chapter 8 said, and the four angels sounded the third part. Of, look, 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 get, get this, look, look, look. Revelation 8, I'm not, I'm not going to do them all, I'm just going to do a little bit, okay? Revelation 8, after the, after the catching away and before the return of Christ, Revelation 8, chapter, verse, chapter 8, verse number 12 said, And the four angels sounded, and, 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 the, and the third part of the sun was smitten, and the third part of the moon, and a third part of the stars, so that the third part of them was darkened, and, the, and shone not for a third part of it, and, and night was likewise. One of the first things is going to happen after the you, you got to understand this. Let, let, let me, let me, I, there's going to be seven years of tribulation, but if you're born again to believe, there's going to be a seven year marriage suffer the Lamb. If you're ready to leave here on that day, you're not going to worry about any of this. But if you're not ready, can I tell you this? If you got friends and family, you ought to share this with them. You know what I'm saying? If you got friends and family, you ought to share this with them. Let, let, let me tell you about that. The, 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 there are seven churches age. The last church age is in Revelation chapter 3. And this is what it said about the last church age. It said, I am rich and increased with good and have need of nothing. But God said, I tried you with fire. And, and, and I found this out, that you were neither cold nor hot, you were lukewarm. It, it almost sounds like the church age we live in. We are apathetic. We're kind of complacent. We're, we're not upset about babies being murdered. You know, we're, we're, it's like we don't understand that. That is not right. But we don't get upset about it. You got to understand this. The church has to do what that last song said. We got to have passion. Endless passion. But what we have is, give me my remote. Georgia won yesterday. I'm excited. And our neighbor next door doesn't know Jesus. He knows we go to church every Sunday, but we never told him about Jesus. He, 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 didn't, he didn't know about God. So, so look, if you're ready to meet God, don't worry about this, but you better free. When I was in the Marine Corps way back when, they, 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 give, they shot us with guns. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You get your vaccination, they do it with gun. Boom, 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 boom. You get bunches of them, right? Before that, when I was a kid, we used to go to the doctor. Anybody here been to the doctor when you was a kid? 
you, none, none of you going to remember this, but the lady that was a nurse had a little thing in a bottle of alcohol that took your temperature. Anybody remember that? Brought that out of that nasty. I don't know what it was in. I don't know what it was tasting. Anybody know what I'm talking about tasting? And put that in your mouth. And she'd take your temperature. When's the last time you took your spiritual temperature? When's the last time you checked to make sure? Look, th this, this is amazing. Luke chapter 21, verse 25 said, and, and there shall be signs in the suns and the moon and in the stars and up on the earth, distress of all nations with perplexity and, and the seas and the waves roaring. You realize when, when that happens, the solar system is completely out of whack, right? The, the, the sun and the moon and the sea, it's going to be, it's going to be crazy, absolutely crazy. Look, look, Revelation 8 and 13 said, And I beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other voices. Anybody got this? Anybody with me? Anybody listen? Uh, in Revelation 8 and 12, he talks about a third of the moon and stars and all that falling to the earth. It's all going to be gone, right? Look. And then he said, of all the insane things, then this angel flying through the air says, woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other voices. By reason of the other voices. The trumps of the three angels, which are yet to sound. Luke 21, 26, uh, you, you can look at this. Basically, the men's hearts fell them for fear. It's going to be such a horrible time, we can't even imagine. But let's go to Revelation 9 and 6. Said, and in those days, and in those days men shall seek death and shall not find it, and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. Can I tell you what he's talking about? People take a gun, put it in their mouth, and blow their brains out, and they live. People take a knife and stab themselves in the heart and they live. They're doing everything they can to die because of the horribleness that's going on on this world. So when's this going to take place? After, after the catching away of the bride, but before the return of Christ. So what does that mean to me? I want to ask you something. Are you on fire for God? Or are you kind of just going through life? People are going to try to die. Look, verse number seven said, listen to this, listen to this, listen, listen. I, I'm not making any of this up. Uh, maybe I should have asked this earlier. How many of y'all believe the word of God is true if you do say amen? How many believe the word of God is absolutely true if you do say amen? Okay, so uh, I, I'm, I'm glad we got that. So this is God's word. It's not Ken Coomer's idea or philosophy or experience. It's the word. Look, and verse number seven said, and the shape of the locusts were like unto horses. Anybody know what a locust is? I said it's a fly on steroids. You know, anybody, and, and, and the shape of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle, and on their head were as there were crowns like gold, and their face were faces of men. And look, and they had hair as the hair of a woman, and their teeth were like teeth of lions. And they had breastplates as there were breastplates of iron. And the sound of their wings were sounds of chariots of many horses running to battle. And they had tails like unto scorpions. And they were stings in their tails. And they, and, they, and they had power to hurt men for five months. And they had a king over them, which is the angel at the bottomless pit. Are you listening to me? It's the Word of God. It's the Word of God. It's not my Word. It's the Word of God. Somehow or other, I think the church has got to this place where that we don't believe this anymore. What we believe is we can live anybody we want to. We can sleep around. We can lie. We can play house. We can do all kinds of things, and we're okay with God. What? How many?
many sons did God have? One. And what did that son do? He died on the cross. Why? So you wouldn't have to live in sin. And so what's bad about sin? The Bible says when sin is brought forth, when it's conceived, it brings forth sin. When less is conceived, it brings forth sin. And when sin is finished, it always brings death. There was a, there, there was a movie and a book out not too long ago called Fifty Shades of Grey. Anybody, anybody remember that? Anybody remember that? Am I the only one who remembers that? Let's try that. If you remember that movie, I didn't ask if you went to it, okay? I didn't ask you maybe you went to it. I said, if you remember, would you just raise your hand? Do you know what it was about? It was about pornography. Can I tell you, if pornography is involved in your relationship, it's 300% more likely it will end in divorce. 300%! What is the matter? Revelation 9, 16. I'm not going to do them all, just a couple, okay? And the number of the army of the horses were 200,000, 200, in other words, 200 million, right? Is that right? E anyway, uh, look, and, and I heard them, and thus I saw the horses in the vision, and them that set up on them having breastplates of fire, brimstone, and heads, and the head of the horses were as head of lions, and out of their mouth issued fire, smoke, and brimstone. By these three were one third part of men killed, and by fire and smoke and by brimstone which issued out of their mouth. For there is power in their mouth and in their tail, for their tails were like unto serpents and, the, and heads. And with them they do hurt. And the rest of the men, which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not. Yet repented not. Of the work of their hands, that they should not worship the devil, and idols of gold, and silver, and brass, and stone. Neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorcery, nor of their fornication, nor the thefts. Can I tell you something? Jesus is coming. And he's coming soon. Luke 21, 34 said, look, it's a fretting member. We talked about the rapture and we talked about the return of Christ. We talk about what's happening in the middle of that during the, the great tribulation period. But but the, the last part we said we're going to talk about the surfretting. Anybody know what surfretting means? I must confess I had to look it up. Luke 21 and 34 said, Take heed to yourself, lest at any time your heart be overcharged with surfretting and drunkenness and the cares of this life, so that they come up on you unaware. You know what surfretting means? It means just having too much of, too much fun, too much steak, too much shrimp. It means that you become so full of life and your life becomes so full that you, you don't have time for Christ. Your life is so full that there's no room for Christ in your life. That's what so fretting means. So fretting in your heart. Your heart's overcharged at the time. At least at any time your heart be overcharged with fretting and drunkenness and the cares of this life. Don't mean bad cares. It means good cares. Anybody here just happier than you can stand it? Listen. I read a story this week about a guy named Aaron Hernandez. The story was written by his brother, DJ Hernandez. When Aaron Hernandez was a freshman in high school, his brother, DJ, was a high school football quarterback. Now, anybody know who Aaron Hernandez is? Anybody ever heard of him? He, he, he was the guy that caught the passes from Tim Tebow. You know, that's who he was. He played at Florida when Tim Tebow played there. He should have been drafted in the first round, but he was drafted in the fourth round. 
because he had such a uh, thuggish mindset. Plays for New England for two years. At the end of two years, he gets a $40 million contract. $40 million to do what you love to do. Can you imagine? The only problem is, about that same time, they arrest him for killing his best friend. You know, the guy that killed was his best friend. He kills his best friend. And then one night in a bar, bumped, some guy bumps into him and he, and he spills his drink and he's arrested for killing those two guys. $40 million contract, best lawyers in the world, and he goes to prison for life. You may or may not know that this week he was on trial again for those other two murders and he was acquitted. But this week he tied some bed sheets together in his cell and 27 years old committed suicide. Ended his life this week. His brother was writing the story that I was reading. He talked about growing up with his brother. He talked about a family where the mother and father were there. And he talked about their life. You would have thought, I can tell you, you would have thought it would have been a story about Vic Beach living in a small town, Bristol, Connecticut. You ever heard of it? Nobody ever has. Just a little town, and everybody loved everybody, and they all played ball together. Sin will take you further than you want to go. It'll keep you longer than you want to stay, and it'll cost you more than you want to pay. And today is the day when we decide what we're going to do with the rest of our life. Today's the day we decide what we're going to do with the rest of our life. So what do you mean? When lust is conceived, bring forth sin. When sin is finished, it brings forth what? So the question is this. Are you a walking dead? Or is there a place in your life where you say, I know that stuff you read is true. I know it's true. But also know where I'm living, I'm playing a dangerous game. My name is not Aaron Hernandez, and I don't have a $40 million contract, but I know I'm not where I need to be with God. I know my relationship with God isn't what it needs to be. I have become complacent. I no longer have a passion. I no longer have a desire inside of me. I go to church because it's my duty, not because it's my delight. I don't have any fire. There's a guy in the Word of the Lord. His name is Samson. You remember Samson? He's a strong guy, right? Strong guy. He's so strong. He couldn't, nobody knew him. No, nobody knew him. He picked up the gates of the town and ran down the road with them. Got involved in the situation, kept laying his head in Delilah's lap, kept laying his head in Delilah's lap. And finally, he told Delilah, my strength is all in my hair. Anybody remember that story? My strength is all in my hair. Can I tell you something about sin? It'll make you stupid. Sin makes people stupid. Sin makes you stupid. What kind of idiot? 27 years old, a $40 million contract, everything in the world you can imagine, and he kills people. Sin makes you so stupid. You think it's your ability. You think it's yours. It's, I, I, I'm, uh, it's me. No. It's God's blessings in your life. Samson did something unique. This is what he did. Delilah woke him up and said, the Philistines are here. They're here. She'd done it before. They're here. They're here. He jumps up out of the bed. He does this. Shook himself and didn't know that the power of God had left his life. You remember the story? It's the same story repeated a million times. They take him, they put him on a grind in the mill, and they poked out his eyes. I'll tell you something, some of you need to get your eyes back. 
you to get your eyes back. Things are going on. You can't even see them. You need your eyes. Remember I said, took that little thing out of it. The nurse took it and shook it like this and put it underneath my tongue. Three days later, she came back. Seemed like it's three days for an eight-year-old kid, you know. So, if you pull that out and you look at that, what's your temperature? Where is it with you and God? Where are you and God at? Who's down here, please? Here's the bottom line. Here's where it all ends, right here. Here's where every bit of it ends, right here. Here's the bottom line. 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 Here it is. Here's the bottom line. Here it is right here. Here's the bottom line. sounds today you go or stay if the trump of God sounds today do you go or do you stay listen 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 old old story the devil's having a meeting in hell one night people getting saved everywhere and he's all upset about it and he said to the executive demons, let's call a big meeting, have all the demons come, we'll figure out what we can do about people getting saved. You know, one of the executive demons said, let's cause them all to have lust in their life and they will never get right. He said, now there's too many people that don't serve God to love their family, love their wife, they don't do that. Another one said, let's cause them to get greedy, want money more than anything in all the world. He said, they'll work seven days a week, get all the money they want. He said, now it won't work. Too many people realize that's a dead end road. By this time, the devil's getting a little angry and Little imp in the back of the room waving his hand. Satan's mad. He said, what do you want? He said, I got the answer. I got the answer. He said, what's the answer then? He said, tell them to wait till tomorrow. Hundreds of thousands of people have made their way to an eternity lost because they intended to get right tomorrow. They felt God. They felt conviction. They felt the need to be in someplace seeking the face of God. They knew what they needed to do. They understood it. They said, tomorrow I'm going to do that. I'm going to get right tomorrow. And tomorrow has never come for so many. Dear Lord, I ask and pray you'll touch and bless in this altar service. God, I ask and pray, Lord, that we realize it's just the word of God. Same thing Ken Coomer said. He didn't say nothing. Ken Coomer said nothing. It's all about God's word.